start with auxiliary verbs next. See, like nouns, verbs are most important. In any language, if you know a noun and a verb, it is enough. You can survive. You can't speak very well, but at least you can live. In any new country, if you learn nouns and verbs, you can live properly. Then we want to make more, we learn prepositions. Then we want to say something colorful, we learn adjectives. Then we want to make it, you know, very, very interesting. We make bigger sentences by using conjunctions. Then we learn adverbs. All these things we learn slowly. But the basic structure of any language, English or Telugu, or your, you know, any language you know, Hindi, Urdu, these are important. The verb is important, noun is important. In English, we divide the verbs into two categories. One is the auxiliary means by the side, not main, not important. They are called as helping verbs. Helping. You know, somebody comes to give you some help, support. Sir is giving you hall, lunch, so much, you know, benefit to you. So helping. Like that we have, very important, but helping. Then we also have what is called as main verbs we call as lexical. These words are already there in your handout, no need to write down. The handout belongs to you now. Keep them carefully. And if anybody gives me a mail, I will give them the mail ID, your mail ID. Say, these students will teach you grammar now. Can you do that? Catch some students and start teaching. Impact Foundation will become wonderful where each student becomes a teacher. 100 are here today. We are creating 100 teachers in four days. Can you imagine? That much confidence you have in yourself that yes, what we learned is perfect. Now I can teach like Madam taught, I can also teach. What is there? So I'm busy, I can't come. Each of you will come and teach 100 students here. Don't you think that's exciting? That is how we should do, you know. In the developed countries, that's what they are doing. The student is a practice teacher. Every student gets a chance to teach in the class. I do it with my students in arts college. The students themselves go and teach other students in arts college, other departments. It's such a successful program. So the possibilities are huge. Therefore, listen carefully, don't try to write down what is there already. What needs to be written only, you write. Lexical means in the dictionary it is a verb. Dictionary is called lexicon, you know that. You know? So, a verb which is a verb by meaning, it shows an action that we call as a lexical verb. First, let us study the auxiliary verbs quickly. Then we will go this lesson half and next lesson full up to one o'clock, only lexical verbs and tenses. Tenses are very confusing, you know, create a lot of problems for us. So I'll tell you simple two, three thing, things about tenses. That much if we do today, that will be finished. Then if time is not there to do exercises, you will do it at home. So tonight you might not get any sleep. Course is not 10 to 1. Course is 10 to next morning 10. 24 hours. 3 hours face to face. Remaining self-study. You know that is what UGC is saying today. If you give one contact hour, give 10 self-study hours. Students should learn to be self-sufficient. Not dependent on a teacher all the time. So I have given you enough homework now. Okay, four days if you don't sleep, nothing will happen. Don't get worried. You sleep two, three hours, enough. Do a lot of work. You will find that you can't recognize yourself in the last day. I didn't know English. I can't believe I didn't know English on 9th May. Now on 12th May, I know English. That feeling I want all of you to get. That confidence is most important. So let us start with auxiliary verbs. We have two types of auxiliary verbs. One is called primary. Primary means main, you know, central, most important. 
primary auxiliary verbs only three in number be and have and do be is be have is h a v e do is d o so these are the root you know all verbs have a root form so from the root we get many forms be is the most important verb in english so it has many forms first person singular am am second first person plural are a r e then second person singular plural are a r e third person singular is i s and third person plural are so we have am is are singular form uh, that is present tense singular plural present tense then you have past tense was and were was is used for i was you were we were they were he and she and it was so we are using singular form as was we also have two other forms that is being b e i n g which is called as present participle and been b e e n which is past participle all these are the forms of be am is was are were being been so we came to seven forms one verb seven forms usually other verbs don't have so many forms has have had only three forms for the verb have root have has singular have present tense singular present tense and normal present tense had past tense had past participle very very dangerous verb having please keep it in the locker bank locker lock it up don't use it maximum mistakes are made in the use of having so i don't want you to use it whenever you feel like using having use has or have that will be correct having if you have to use then say no 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 very scared of having having is a terrible mistake which everybody makes if you say i'm having a house i'm having a pen i'm having a book you know what meaning a speaker of english might understand is that you're going to eat your pen you're going to eat your book you're going to eat everything your house also okay so we are using it all the time i'm having a brother now are you a cannibal that you're going to have your brother not possible to have you cannot say i'm having a brother how many times you're using this you think not only you but others are using when you hear somebody you can tell them please don't mind please forgive me for correcting your english but please stop using having if you do that your english becomes that much better do also do does did doing and done five forms so these are the primary ones the be form is used for everything you know if you're in a room you say i am in a class be form is used you say i am at home i am a student i am a doctor he is a doctor like that be form is used maximum usage in english is the be form so these primary auxiliaries have one use and that is as a verb one use that is as a helping verb so when it is a verb it is used for helping so i was telling you about auxiliary verbs i started by telling you that be is a very important word one of the uses of be i have mentioned to you and that is to so show that something is there the other use of be is as a helping verb whenever we want to have helping verb be 
then we usually use what we call as the continuous tense. Some tenses are continuous tenses where we use the helping verb be. When I am doing tenses, I will tell you more about this. For the time being, I told you that root B has seven forms and it has two uses. Similarly, root have. Have also has, it has five forms and it has two uses. One use have is that something belongs to somebody. Like I gave you examples. I have a house or I have a brother. This is belonging. You say, my friend has a house. Then you're using has form, but you're using the same meaning is the same. That is one usage. That is the usage of have or has for showing belonging. The other is the tense form. As a helping verb to the tense also, it can be used. Where we use perfect tenses, again in tenses I will tell you more about this, we use the helping verb have. So, wherever we want to use helping verb, there you will find that the have form and the main verb form is used. Similarly, do. These three I told you are primary auxiliary verbs. So, we are left with do. Do also has two uses. Suppose you use do, you can use it as a main verb and you can use it as a helping verb. Do is to perform when it is used as main verb. You know, you say that I do some work. So, I is subject, work is object, do is the verb. No other verb is there. Do is used for adding emphasis. If somebody asks you, do you study? That person doesn't believe you. So instead of saying I study, which means simple, you want to stress. While writing, we underline. You know, while speaking, we can't underline. You can't stop a person and say, you wait, you wait, I want to underline one word. So in every language, we have varieties of stress markers. So you say, I do study. I do study means, I study force, insist, stress. That is how we use do. That is one helping verb, do. The other form of do is, whenever you want to make a negative or a question, wherever you want to make a negative or a question, there you will find that do is used. Do you study? So, the question is do. We can't say study you. The usual verb form we use for question making. So, wherever you want to make a question with a lexical verb, there you have to use do for making the question. Or negative. I do not study. I, you cannot say I study not because lexical verbs do not have the not form. Okay? All the lexical verbs in English, the majority of the verbs are lexical. Whenever they require a question or whenever they require a negative, they had to make use of do. So, be, have and do have a verb meaning. They have a helping verb meaning. So, all these three, you will again see many exercises. I am avoiding all exercises today, hoping that you will come with the exercises. Now, we come to the second category. I told you primary auxiliary, modal auxiliary. Now, modal auxiliary indicates the mood. The mood. What is your mood? Then you say, I am, you know, comfortable mood. So, we are, different types of moods are indicated. In the morning, somebody told you, you should learn English. Therefore, we say should is a verb. It doesn't have any other form, like be, have, do, have seven forms, five forms. Should doesn't have any form, it has only one form. 
so there are certain words in english which indicate such moods they change the aspect of the verb they change the manner in which the verb is used and these have only a single form they also have a negative form somebody can tell you you shouldn't forget telugu you know you're learning english now after some time you'll say oh i know such good english i don't want telugu anymore no that's not possible we love our mother tongue therefore we should never forget our own mother tongue we should learn english we should learn our own mother tongue also we should remember it therefore we have to balance so should should not and a contracted form is there shouldn't single word should n apostrophe t shouldn't when you want to speak good english you must be able to use these contracted forms if you say should not your english doesn't sound so natural as when you say shouldn't that makes your accent better so we are all aiming for that also so like that a list is there of the modal auxiliary verbs you can look at that list if you feel like in your handout or you can listen to what i'm saying here we have the list can could may might should must will shall would need dare ought to and used to so these are all modal verbs for you it is important to remember that unless you have a main verb these verbs cannot be used these verbs need a main verb to qualify also the main verb will remain in its root form and all the changes will take place in this verb whenever you use an auxiliary verb whenever you use a modal auxiliary also you have to have the main verb in its root form we call it a non finite form finite means which acts as a verb non finite which does not act as a verb so these are the non finite root forms so can usually implies capability the negative form is there cannot cannot is a single word in english not two words and it is written with two ends many people make a mistake don't do that cannot two words i mean two ends and one word other forms are two two words short form is there you have to use can't cannot can't therefore we have to be able to use both these forms suppose you want to indicate capability you can do something so you say i can learn english you know some people might not be capable of learning they have a learning disorder so you don't have you can learn but i can learn english cannot be changed to other thing you know sometimes you call up a person and you say can i speak don't worry some siren is going can i speak to you for a minute yes if you have a god given organ of speech you can speak to me if you want my permission then you have to say may i speak to you could i speak to you many people feel could is the past tense of can but that's not always true could is used for polite request so if you want to take somebody's permission you can say may or could you should not use permission can but most of us use permission also can which we need to avoid then cannot you know you can i can say i cannot walk fast i'm very old you know i cannot walk fast so instead of saying cannot i can also say i can't walk fast like that each of these modals have their uses 
I have given you the list of modals and I have also given you how they are used, what is the mood they indicate, what is the negative form, how it is written, very important, you know, spelling, how it is written. All of them you see are written separately except cannot. And all the short forms are also there. A word like mayn't, you know, may not, so difficult for people to pronounce. I may not come tomorrow. Suppose there is a chance that I might not, you know. Might makes the remote possibility. May is more of a possibility. So instead of saying may not, I will use the word mayn't. But you have to keep pronouncing, practicing in order to get thy. If you see something is going to happen, you know, you stand for elections in your college, you say, I may win. That means chances are 90%. If chance is only 50%, you say, I might win. Chance becomes less. Therefore, we have differences. Advice can be given in different way. I already told you should. You should learn English. Suppose I want to make it strong advice, then I can say, you must learn English. Should is slightly lower, must is very powerful. Suppose I want to make it slightly lower, I can say, you ought to learn English. Ought to is little. Advice is very mild. Should is slightly higher. Must is very high. Do you get? So in a similar way, we can use all the three. These points are very clear. Telling you a few things. I think I won't be able to do tenses today. Time is very short. And today being first day, we are going at a slow pace. Tomorrow we will include tenses in our tomorrow's schedule also. So get ready to do everything. Today I made you do a couple of exercises because I wanted you to get familiar. From now, no exercises in this room, all exercises outside, only correcting exercises in this room. Okay? I will tell you what all I want to say. And if you feel like asking some questions, we will have some time for questions also. Okay? Today, let me try to see what is left. So these are the auxiliary verbs which I was talking to you about. I gave you example of should, must, and ought, similar to each other. I gave you example of may and might, similar to each other. Then I told you that can is not always the past tense of could. Sometimes could has other uses also. A verb which is very often misused is used to. <clears throat> used to is a verb you should use carefully because it indicates past habit. Suppose you're sitting in this room and you say instead of I attend a class, you say I used to attend a class. That means you have finished attending. You are not attending anymore. But I see hundreds and thousands of mistakes of the word used to. What are you doing? I used to be a student. You are still a student. Don't say I used to. That means you finish. I used to work hard. That means now I've become lazy. See the meaning? You're making a joke out of your English. I used to work hard means I'm not working hard anymore. Now I'm not doing any work. So you have to be very careful in the use, in the knee. Then you have, you know, ought to and dare to and need to. Very, very rarely we use these forms. But all of them take the to infinitive of the verb. If you look at your list, you will find how the to has to always come with them. To and then the verb. <coughs> Don't use them very often because they are quite rarely used. Like we use be, have, etc. very much, can, could, etc. very much, we don't use the others. 
the verbs shall and will are used for making a future you know unlike our languages which have a future verb form english doesn't have a future verb form the root word is not able to give us a future so we have to add a helping verb to make the future i say we shall meet again tomorrow i'm talking about tomorrow i'm i'm saying meet instead of saying we meet tomorrow i'm saying we shall meet tomorrow this is how it is used when you use shall with first person it becomes a future whereas if you say will with first person it becomes a promise you're making a promise i will help you is different from i shall help you meaning difference is there all of them are future but meaning is that i will help you is a modal use and i shall help you is a tense use similarly with the other pronouns you use shall it becomes compulsion suppose you say you shall do the work that means if you don't do you'll get punishment compulsion if you do then it is good but if you you say you will do the work that means you do or you may not do no compulsion like that meaning changes come so these are verbs which have tense aspect they also have modal aspect will shall has both these forms because all future verbs will make use of will or shall that you have to keep in mind and we have included them in the modal list also now we move on to what is called as the lexical verbs in your list you will again find that you know lexical verbs are also there i have already told you about short forms i think some uh, uh, short forms are also there then some correction of sentences are there one thing which if you are appearing for a competitive exam one type of question which comes is called question tag you know question tag is a very favorite of all competitive exams examiners all exams so the tag is usually based on the subject and the verb you have to look at the subject and the verb suppose that also one exercise is there which you have studied in your schools and colleges i'm telling you again you know english is simple suppose that is the question that is the statement then for english we use the pronoun it and is becomes negative isn't so the question will be english is simple comma isn't it isn't it is short form of is not suppose we are saying the students want to learn english now the students becomes they because more than one student and want is a verb which cannot have the negative form i told you lexical verbs don't have negative so the negative of a lexical verb is made by do not does not did not so the students want want is present tense and it is also without s so the form is do negative of do is not do not or don't so students want to learn english comma don't they d o n apostrophe s they question mark like that we make question tags question tags are very important for good speakers of english when we use such english then everybody feels okay you are able to use english well otherwise if we use english in a you know bookish manner then we are not very comfortable with english 
that is english is not impressive so when we use tags we become more like the speakers of english the native the mother tongue speakers of english